is the simple majority of the House and Senate or the Oversight Committee in the House and Senate, okay? So basically, all these regulations, everything that control, controls our school and what they do in that school comes from the Department of Ed. doesn't come from us. It's done in regulation. And they just make the rules the way they want to make them. A lot of people point at us, and we don't vote on how they teach in the schools and what they teach in the schools. That's done in that big building up there called Department of Education, who reports to the governor. And, and, and I will tell you that we did pass a bill last year uh, when we had the majority, and it was vetoed by the governor dealing with the books and, and, and you know the yep. you know the book uh, I think curriculum transparency and and dealing with some of the you know profane books that are in libraries. Governor vetoed it. I mean that's what happened. So so. And we do not have two thirds to override. We we didn't have the, the the override. I mean, we don't have that big a majority. So, so point taken. We need to do better. But we have we have passed laws. They've been vetoed. We have tried to move uh, legislation to, to get control of the regulatory uh, branch of government. But that that that's that, that's kind of the lay of the land right now. But I, I appreciate I, I appreciate you raising your concerns. Yes, you said earlier, Dan, uh, you're talking about uh, when the when Democrats vote, they all go the same way. But when the Republicans vote, there's always a dozen or so to go. Almost every time. That's, that's I see the same thing on uh, in the national on the national level. My question simply is, why is that? Why why can't the Republicans get their act together like the Democrats and vote? The same way, when it's just common sense, that's what they need to do. Uh, some, of, some of it, uh, I mean, and this is just anecdotally talking to some of these guys, because I always ask the question, I'm like, well, you know, why weren't you with us, right? You know, why, why didn't you? Well, some of it is, their districts are not red at all. They're blue, and I'm talking very blue. So they are always over their shoulder, you know, or worry that if, if they don't, vote moderately or whatever you want to call it, uh, they're not going to come back. And look, as much as it, for lack of a better word, pisses me off when these guys aren't with us, if they're not with us, then we don't control the calendar. We are not a majority, period. The way that the, the, the political geography is of this state is that we can't, we don't have, not every seat is deep red. It just isn't. And not every seat's deep blue. So. There are plenty of seats that they have. They only have one seat right now, really. One seat that they have a, a blue dog Democrat uh, who's kind of pro-gun, you know, pro, pro-life. Uh, but but they bully him so much, and he's, he's, all, he's all by himself, that he, they, they kind of bully him into submission. But but we, that we so that's, that's the reason, like in talking to them anecdotally, that's the reason why they vote that way. Um, why we don't stick together? You know, I, I would love to, and trust me, we have very heated debates in our as as House Republicans. You know, really going after these guys, saying you got to stick with the team. And you know what? When we do stick with the team, and we did this year, we did we did destroy three gun three gun bills because we stuck together. So we can do it. It's just it's not it, we can't, we haven't figured out on every issue. But three gun bills died because we voted as a block. So it does work, but it's not going to be on every issue because. So, so is it is it a local level, is this level here that uh, we have to do something to get the right people voted in? What, basically, what you said is they don't want to lose the power they have, so they so they'll go against their own party. Well, so we office. see that every day. Yeah. We see Democrats voting against their district every day. That time you're talking about Frank Burns. Yeah, Frank Burns. Frank, Frank Burns is. A Democrat who sits in a Republican area. Johnstown. Trump won it by like 40%. Yeah. And the only reason he's there is because he'd been there. He's the incumbent. It's hard to take him out. He's a very likable guy. And we are going to go after his seat. And we do every year. And, and that's exactly what will happen to Republicans. Some of these Republicans in blue seats, they, he votes concert, too conservative. They're, the Democrats will put a ton of money to take him out for Democrat in there. I'd rather have him 
forced to vote with the Democrats from time to time and keep our numbers up so that maybe we can get back in the majority than to see him vote completely Republican and lose the seat to a Democrat, which is much, much worse. That's the reason why. Next question. Hi, Jeremy Ressler. Um, Education is a huge topic, and we not only need reform at the local level, but even in universities. So I know the current bill to fund the public universities is stalled out. I think the Democrats want a 6 or 7% increase, and you guys are being smart and say no. Now I'm waiting to see what my son's bill is. He goes to Pitt. I graduated from Pitt. We're vastly conservative, so don't blame us for the chance we're getting. Um, so question one, you know, what, what's that look like? Because I think you guys are in, in recess until September. Uh, so you know, I'm waiting to see what, what when the bill comes, and two, what reform can be done? Because Pitt, a local school, you know, they're the largest employer in Pennsylvania, yet they're still the most expensive public school. So what can be done to help start alleviating or force these universities to, you know, lower their tuition costs? I mean, they're bloated with bureaucracy and administration, you know, raising prices. So kind of like a two-part question. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, First and foremost, so sitting on the Appropriations Committee, we do bring in, the, we call them the non preferreds Pitt, Penn State, Temple, and Lincoln. But uh, those four universities are technically not public universities. They are privately run, but we give them state money. So we call them state related. So because of that, you need two thirds vote to get, give them money. So that's why that bill, that's why that bill is always a little bit more challenging because you need to get Republicans, Democrats to agree on their funding mechanism. The problem here, and I think we've seen this across a lot of uh, education, is that we want to fund families and students, not systems, right? And and post-secondary education is 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 an area that really needs that to take a look at that. So what our caucus has been working on and trying to push is that you know because the universities say, okay, we get this money, this is how we all offset in-state tuition. However, we asked him at appropriations hearings this year, I said, okay, you get your 7% increase, uh, uh, you get your 7% increase that you're requesting, are you gonna, will you agree not to raise tuition? And definitively, every single one of the presidents of each one of those universities said, no, we can't commit to not increasing tuition. Non-starter for me, that, uh, right there. I mean, that, look, I mean, we're, we're here to protect, you know, all of our constituents, and when, when they're saying, well, we need this money to offset in-state tuition, but hey, we're going to still increase tuition, which Pitt has done every year, Penn State has done every year, it's a problem, right? So this is our only leverage for, for us to say, okay, guys, commit to that. Commit to not increasing tuition. Commit to some of these other reforms. Uh, you know, Pitt is a little bit problematic. It has some other things that, that are going on. They're very arrogant. You know, they have some research out there that's really not great. Um, so there's, and they're just arrogant about it because they like, it's our money. Because guess what? They're going to send you a bill. You're going to get it real soon. And they're going to say, well, the state legislator didn't fund you, so here's your new tax. So, and, and rightly so, right? I mean, it's, it's a higher bill for you guys. But make no mistake, these universities are not poor. They are not poor. They, in fact, Penn State and Pitt are sitting on some of the largest endowments. In the in the country, Just right? Under five billion. So 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 this is our only leverage, right? This is our only leverage, and I know it's frustrating. You, know, you got a student in, in, in a university, and you get the, that bill in the mail, and it's higher, and you're like, well, why the heck doesn't let? This is our only leverage to actually protect families. And the the alternative here would be to actually just send this money straight to the family. If they're saying, okay, we're going to offset, I think Pitt is ten thousand, I think is what they say they offset theirs by. Then let's send you a check for ten thousand dollars. Why does it got to go to Pitt? Let's send it to you. So that that's the type of area that that's the areas that we've been looking for reform. Um, and this is the only leverage point we have. It's this is the one thing in the minority because it needs a two thirds vote that we have a little bit of authority. And that's 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 the reason why we've been. Uh, that's why that's held up right now. Pitt's been a little disingenuous with their reporting to the state too. And I'm I'm not sure we want to get into the abortion issue here today but it has a lot to do with that. Hi, I'm Charlotte. Uh, Dale and I cover the ACRC office every Friday, pretty much for the last two years. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to give you all some feedback because at times I feel like we deserve hazard pay. Republicans across the board are so ticked off. Forget the Democrats, 
they know where they're coming from. It's Republicans. And yes, you guys are in a primarily heavily Republican district, but enough are expressing the point they just aren't going to vote for you because they're having a hard time telling the difference between Republicans and Democrats. You say you're not the majority. You guys were before. All the stuff we're finding out that's going on through the Board of Education the library. This has been going on for a long time. We didn't know. The same thing with energy that got forced on us by Wolf. And now we have thousands of acres of industrial solar plants going in here. We need you guys to fight for us. That's what we elect you for. You can't just put the burden on us. And it doesn't make any difference if you win. If you aren't raising holy hell so that everybody knows that you're fighting for us, we could not have a majority. He said, we're getting a lot of Democrats here. I mean, we get, look, I, I, I get it. You're frustrated. We're frustrated. We can yell and scream as, if you want us it's to. It's not yelling and screaming. It's informing your constituency about what's going on and that they need to be more fully involved because this all get everybody, like, you surprised. They were trusting their representatives to look after And it's their children and their grandchildren. Sure. Look. I can tell you right now, I try to communicate with my constituents every possible way. On Friday, I had a bre I, we, we, had, we hosted a, a legislative breakfast. You know how many folks came? 15. We advertised in the newspaper. We sent people postcards. It, you know, it's trying to get folks engaged. Understood. But we do other events too. We have other. We have town halls. I have. I have. We've had, We do. I've done town halls in the evenings. We do different times. I get it. I understand. We trying to cater to different folks, different times of, of the day. There, uh, bills that come across Dan and I's desk every day, and we hear from maybe five people, same five people. I'm not saying that we're not. That's not on us too. And we try to be on the community and trying to educate people on, on what we're up to. We really do. I get it. We can do better. We will do better. We have to do better. I don't know, I, I put an email out to just about 4,000 people in my district every single Friday. You probably are on the list. I refuse to send out mailers. It costs you about $10,000 every time I do one, so I stop that. That's taxpayer money going out when I can send you a Z, uh, a, an email that costs zero. Okay, So I try to keep everybody informed a little bit of what's going on in Harrisburg. Anybody can sign up. I've got people in Pittsburgh. I've got people in Maryland just that I know that sign up. They get it too. So anybody can go in there and sign up. And every week there's a place where you can just click on it and ask a question through my website. And we get a couple dozen every week and we answer them. Everyone gets an answer. So it's not like we're not trying to reach out that we're hiding somewhere. Go ahead, since we're still on your question. Well, this country's definitely going in the wrong direction. That's for sure. And and, and look, I, and I, the way that that can be helpful to have them call. I, I, I'll talk to anybody that calls our. I mean it. Have them call our office, and, and and if there's a concern, please have them reach out. All right. Next question. Okay, so we hear at the federal level, it's always the power of the purse, the power of the purse. So excuse my ignorance, but could you explain for myself, and perhaps other folks here, how the Pennsylvania stuff works? Do you all have a power of the purse that being the House can put a kibosh on some of these bills or delay them? So, so, so 
yes. Um, the only difference is that uh, uh, the budget is passed just like any other bill is, right? So it's a negotiated product that the governor has to sign. So, so yes, uh, the pit example is a perfect example where we are, that, that's, uh, especially even in the minority, there's a two-thirds vote requirement there uh, to fund that that particular system. So the reason we're holding out there is because it's the only leverage we have to get some reforms there, right? Um, you know, on other budget issues, um, I'll talk real alternatives as a, as a program. I'll use that as an example. Real alternatives is a program kind of uh, that's uh, an option for, um, you know, uh, rather than getting abortion, it's, a, it's a, a, a group out there that provides funding for families to make others' decisions. Wolf wanted to cut this every single year. He, he didn't want that option to get funded. We, that was something every year that we made a absolute, has to be in the budget every single year. Um, that, you know, so yes, there are, there are areas that we can absolutely use the power of the purse to uh, make some policy changes, um, but it's, you got we pick our battles, I suppose, and um, not every, you know, Dan and I aren't in those rooms every single time uh, to make, you know, prioritize. There's other members that need to make, you know, it, it, there's 102 members that need to make that decision, um, but that that is used. Uh, it could be used better, and I know uh, I, we, ha we have members, and Dan and I included, that have made that argument in the past on, on some of these items, like why are we funding, you know, certain things, like, that happens, those conversations happen, but again, it's a numbers issue. Right, but it's my understanding at the federal level that you pass the budget, but you just don't give the money. Well, the state treasurer's office controls that at the state. So, um, Stacey Garrity's office is uh, who. Republican? Yep, she is. Yep. So, if the, once the budget's passed, then she, her office is who handles actually sending. Just, just a quick question, by a raise of hands, how many people in here think we have a budget? Pennsylvania. Okay, so you guys are up on that. Amazing to me how many people I run into and say, hey, congratulations, you got a budget passed. <laughs> no, 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 not so fast. We will not have a budget passed for a while. So yeah, at least you guys are up on it when a lot of people are not. But it helps to be in the majority. Yeah, so I have a question. Um, maybe a little bit of a comment followed by a question. But I, I, Regarding the education, and, and there's so much going on, one of you guys mentioned that it's actually the Department of Education appointed by the governor who does most of the nonsense, and, and the school districts don't have much choice about it. Um, and you don't have control over the Department of Education because you're not the governor, and so on, and majorities and all this. What would it take for a school district, say uh, just one of them around here, um, I don't know, maybe write up a, a sanctuary school policy. There's sanctuary cities all over the place for dumb stuff, usually. Um, why not play the same game? Our school district is going to be a safe school district for boys who are boys and girls who are girls, something like that. Um, our bathrooms are sanctuary bathrooms. And, and we don't, we're just, we're maybe a declaration of independence. We're independent. We're, we don't care what the Department of Education says. They say whatever they want up in Harrisburg. We're not accountable to Harrisburg. We're accountable to our people here. Um, would something like that be possible? Is, is kind of maybe an open question. And then secondly, uh, as, as kind of a comment, the, the debate between the charter schools and the brick and mortar public schools, to me, at, at our church we have two different homeschool co-ops. None of them get a single penny in funding. They're paid for out of their own pockets. Um, we have 90 kids coming to our one this year. The other one's got about 60. Uh, they're banging on the door. Hey, can we just use your building to do education for free? It won't cost anybody any money. And it, I, I really, when, when I see these families, many of them really struggle to pay for their own kids' education and paying tax money for other people's education. Um, and then to hear the tax-funded charter schools versus brick-and-mortar schools arguing about who gets to hold the monopoly card really just kind of is frustrating uh, coming from people who pay their own education and pay into the public system at the same time, uh, usually without even complaining about it. But but I guess my question is, is mostly oriented about that idea of creating an independent school district that just disregards whatever nonsense it might be. That's all. Almost want to throw that question to Al 
since he's a school board it, member. It's probably funding related, I'm guessing. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, Pennsylvania uh, subsidizes, the, the, uh, the state subsidizes about 35, 40%. Uh, the state subsidizes about 35, 40 um, percent. Pastor, I, I, th I think if we would go that direction, uh, they would probably withhold that subsidy, and that's what they hold over us. Uh, same way with federal programs out of uh, D.C. Uh, I've recommended on certain initiatives, there's, you know what, uh, D.C., keep your money, you know? That's, uh, not, not to mention the lawsuits by these fringe groups that would make them spend a ton of your tax money defending what they did. Right. Even though we are all on the same page. Boys' rooms should be for boys and girls' rooms should be for girls. Boys should be in boys' sports and girls should be in girls' sports. We in this room probably all agree to that 100%. And whether it's right or wrong isn't going to matter to the fringe groups. They're going to put their money together and hire an attorney and they're going to have to hire a bevy of attorneys and spend a ton of your tax money dragging it through the courts. And, and, that's, and that gets awfully costly as well. I'm going to belly up to the bar, but what about the people that are already stretched to the last dime? Are they willing to belly up to the bar? Do you have another question here? Um, I'm Michelle Smyers. I also sit on the board with Al, and I'm also the council chair for the Montreal Reading Management. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's all, yeah. Um, so when it comes to education, I know a lot. Um, and Dan, you and I, we've emailed each other. Yes, we have. Charlotte has already uh, touched on the Trevor Project, which is one of the things I want to talk about. Um, I'm probably like the oxymoron because I'm a domestic terrorist who sits on the school board. Um, but You're anyway, a caring mother. That's what qualifies yeah, I, you. Exactly. Um, so I, I call this transgenderism. It's a social contagion. And, and that's what it is. And it's taking over our children. And we can't really pinpoint why or who's doing it, but we know it's happening. And besides the Trevor Project, the other thing that, that we're seeing, obviously, is the issue with the books and the libraries. I personally, as a taxpayer and as a parent, not as a board member, challenged my own school district on the book All Boys Are Blue by George R. Johnson. If anybody's familiar with the book, it's pretty nasty, okay? Um, out of nine people, Eight of them said, no, nope, keep that book in school. On your school board? No. It was a uh, unbiased re reconsideration committee. Okay? They I've decided read, to keep that in there. I have read excerpts from that exactly. book, and it is like a exactly. penthouse so, magazine in place. Yeah, okay, it's absolutely. Absolutely. So here's the problem, okay? Um, obscenity, and we'll classify that as obscenity. We all know what obscenity is see it okay that's obscene we know it obscenity is not protected by the first amendment but ironically obscenity is exempted in our school libraries okay so I need you guys to get it together and fix that okay I need you guys to get us out of the ALA. The state of Montana, just this week, I was on the Zoom call with them, pulled out of the ALA. The yeah. ALA is the American Libraries Association. Okay? They are a non-elected body, but yet my school is being forced by who knows who to have to follow the recommendations of the ALA. And the ALA is saying, hey, Gordon's great, we need more of it. Okay, the elected, the elected president of the ALA is an actual Marxist. She's an avowed Marxist. This is what's coming for your children. So, yes, I do. So, so my thing is, number one, I need you to get that done. Number two, um, Dan, I can show you all of the chat rooms for the Trevor Project because I'm in there. I've infiltrated it. Um, no, actually, Charlotte, I don't have a question. That was it. Um, but, you know, I need you guys to get the budget done because you forced me to get a budget done before July 1st at the school board. And um, kind of hard for me to do a budget when I don't know what exactly is I always for thought me. that was insane. Well, can we change it? I, I, wish, I wish we could. 
But in case anyone didn't hear what I said when you had mentioned about the pornography and everything that are in the books, which is permitted, it's also permitted on the public square, but only if you're having a pride parade. Yes. Something needs to be done is that public indecency. Public so going to the next question, Jack. Gentlemen, I said. I sympathize playing with a busted hand. Playing with a busted hand. Okay. All right. I know it. But as everyone has said, there's things that have been ignored for years. We haven't been brought to this point like this. You know, when the Democrats are in the minority, they raise hell. Republicans don't raise hell. You guys kind of just let things go along. It's not going to cut it anymore. As Charlotte Jurzinski indicated to you, she's in that office. People are wondering what the hell's going on. I understand it's hard to communicate. I appreciate you send out the emails. But you have to be more public. And you have to be more worth it. You know, you didn't really answer what the chairwoman asked you earlier. She said her piece about the Trevor Project and its relationship State Department of Education. We kind of went around. We may have to go to war, with the State Department of Education. You may have to open your mouths every day of the week. You may have to work with your colleagues in the Senate. I mean, the Democrats do it all the time when they're out. What's wrong with that? You know, the Trauma Project is attempting to normalize sexual fetishes and perversions. And they're doing it virtually in front of everyone. People, as you can tell from listening to your constituents, are getting very concerned about it. You are leaders. You are elected officials. You may not control the votes, but you have mouths. And maybe you should start thinking about dragging that more upon the state committee into this. Also, you know, we're kind of running out of patience. We're kind of running out of time. That's all I have to say. All right, next question. <laughs> yes, my name's Alan Baines, and I appreciate all, what everybody's been saying about education. Everything's a very important topic. Mine's a little different, a little uh, away from that. It has to do with the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Uh, I just read recently where the Pennsylvania Turnpike is the most expensive road in the world, not just in the country. We got rid of all these toll takers, which they've been wanting to do for a long time. But it keeps climbing up in expense. They have a commission, I think they're all paid, to sit on the Turnpike Commission to regulate the Turnpike. I don't know what they really do. Some of them, I understand, don't even, aren't even in the state most of the time they phone it in. Anyway, I also understand that the Turnpike is required to pay PennDOT millions of dollars every year. Why isn't the Turnpike just part of PennDOT? Now, I don't, I'm not a big fan of PennDOT, but why do we have two organizations at stake on the same thing? It seems to me we could streamline that, get rid of this commission, let, the turn, let PennDOT handle it. Maybe, at least the rates wouldn't go up anymore, maybe. That's a joke, probably, but 
uh, at least maybe it would hold it for a while. I mean, this is a 